Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here from National Weather Service. Let's take a quick look at some of our recent weather and talk about a heat wave coming up for much of the West. So April through May, the past 30 days, precipitation has actually been below normal across Southern California, even though those are months that normally we don't get much precipitation. The temperature has been below normal as well especially along the coast as shown on the right hand side. We've had about 15 cloudy days here in San Diego and up along the coast and even the inland valleys, you can see temperatures are averaging a couple degrees below average. This is the weather pattern so far this spring. So we see a little remnant of the Pacific jet stream uh, from our past prior active winter and that jet stream or weak upper level trough has been allowing the cooler conditions and the deep marine layer across the coastal areas and even into our valleys. We do see a blocking pattern that is set up over the central Pacific. That's the red H shown on the map. If we take a look at precipitation for the water year or since October of last year all the way through May, our winter was wet, especially in Southern California. You can see the green and blue shaded 100 to near 150% of average. So one to one and a half times wetter than usual. Our deserts though have been dry. Uh, so they are below average still. Temperature indications aren't showing much, but our inland mountains and deserts did come out to be for this past water year so far, a little bit below average in Southern California. And that is a reflection of the wetter and cloudier days. If we look at the western view, you can see it's very spotty in terms of the precipitation compared to normal. Some places were wetter, like northern Utah, but southern Utah was drier than normal. In Arizona, northern Arizona drier, but in southern Arizona wetter than normal. So very spotty. Temperatures for the water year, not much signal right about average slightly above average across most of the region except southern california that we talked about if we look at the climate toolkit and the same type of view but different color scheme that might help you visualize how southern california was wetter than average but still much of the west was drier than average for the past winter if we look at temperature, you can see that slight warming is indicated by that light pink red color across most of the West, except for some pockets of cooler than average for the past winter in Southern California. Now, if we rank it, uh, this water year came out to top 10 in some places in Southern California. So that means top 10 wettest as shown here around the LA basin. However, most of California was not in the top 10 as indicated on this map. Now, the prior winter, a lot of places were in the top five wettest, even Southern California. San Diego came in 20 wettest. The weather pattern last year featured, as shown here, basically two jet streams that merged together. So an extended enhanced jet stream across the Pacific. Uh, and they met over California, and that's where the wettest conditions were, especially central Southern California for most of the winter. This is a map showing the average weather pattern between November and early April. The precipitation in California stood out like this. So for the Sierra Nevada mountain, where much of our water comes from, it ended up being so far a little bit below average for rain and snow. If you look at the snow only on the right hand side, you can see it's right around average to a little bit above, much less than last year, 2022-2023. So despite how wet and snowy it seemed, we actually ended up with much less precipitation and snow across California this winter, 23-24. If we look in Colorado, uh, they did about average, so about 100% of normal across much of the basin there. So that's good and bad news. Um, the bad news 
is that Lake Powell and Lake Mead are still only about a third full as shown here. Um, the good news is that we have back-to-back -back years where at least we're making progress and gains and the water levels are higher than they were this time last year shown on the right hand side. Now for California the water supply is looking really good even with a normal winter across our mountain areas. Not normal in LA, 150% of normal, but in our mountain areas, about normal. So reservoirs like Diamond Valley in Riverside County are nearly full. If you look across the state, uh, the water supply is excellent. Lake Orville, for example, 100% of normal, so completely full. That's our, our largest reservoir. And Shasta, also nearly as large, uh, a little bit larger uh, than Oroville is 95% capacity. So great news in terms of drought and water supply in California. Now, what's the outlook? Uh, we've seen cooler conditions in Southern California uh, so far this spring. Uh, a warm up is expected across all of the West. Looks like the epicenter of the warming will be the Great Basin. So Nevada, Utah, Northern California but we'll be on the edge of it here in Southern California. This outlook is for June 5 through 13. Uh, compared to normal, above average temperatures are expected over most of the West, with uh, real no indication on any precipitation. If you look out the next several weeks uh, into June, we're looking at that warm pattern showing up across the interior Great Basin, uh, the Rockies, and likely reaching all the way into California as shown here. No indication of precipitation. If we look for the summer months, July through September, our traditional summer, we see that same signature of prolonged heat wave across the west, especially the Great Basin and part of the southwest with California on the edge. And that will also be a factor in our monsoon with potentially below normal or drier than normal conditions in our monsoon. That's not good for what we showed earlier with Lake Powell and Lake Mead, where they can get significant precipitation even in the summer months. As a reminder, heat risk is a product we issue from the National Weather Service. And heat risk is available on a daily basis and you can look at your area and see if the heat that is expected, the temperatures are unusual or not. So what this does is factor in climatology or normal temperatures compared to our predicted forecast temperatures. Um, and this is also correlated with Centers for Disease Control hospitalization data. Now um, it's available in two different forms. The graphical hazard outlook shows the same heat risk information uh, but a different form and also includes information about other hazards such as lightning, thunderstorms, and wind on the same page. This information is available on weather.gov.